If you've heard of functional programming, perhaps you think it's all about map and reduce and aren't sure how to use them or why it's worth all the hype. Or maybe you've heard the scary words like functor, monoid, or the infamous monad. It's a made up word used to trick students. Functional programming is more than just map and reduce, and those big scary math words are actually quite basic coding patterns. In fact, you've probably used some of them yourself without even knowing it. These functional patterns and concepts can make your code simpler and more concise, easier to read, more testable, more reusable and composable, easier to maintain and modify later, and safer to run. They allow us to turn code like this into this in a future exercise about buying cookies from a cookie jar. These functions could be asynchronous or synchronous, they could fail, and the code just looks the same. Or we can write code this simple to describe how a list of law firms like this should be merged into a single law firm like this. We can even use nearly the same code for seemingly different problems, like putting together a wardrobe of outfits or taking a random walk and seeing where we end up. Again, all of these functions could be async or have errors and the code would look exactly the same. Throughout this series, we'll learn by organically reinventing concepts one by one. We'll see that they're actually quite simple to understand. And as we expand our knowledge, we'll write some really concise and powerful code. By the end, we'll have some new ways to think about code architectures so we can easily identify these strangely universal patterns in order to solve any new problem that comes our way. We'll end up at a library called Effect, which makes it very easy to employ all these concepts to write extremely concise, composable, testable, and powerful code. By the way, if you're interested in Effect, don't worry. They've done a fantastic job avoiding all this jargon, so you can mostly jump right in and get to coding. But this series is about getting a deeper understanding of the mathematical concepts upon which Effect and other FP libraries are built. I'm an engineer with over 10 years of experience in web development. I've been full stack, but mostly focus on the front end, because as we know, front end is where all the cool and artsy kids hang out. We're not sitting around doing math for fun like those weird back end and systems nerds over there. Aw, oh, that was uncalled for. Except I have a secret. I am a nerd who does math for fun. Please don't tell the other kids. I spend way too much time on YouTube watching math videos, but no matter how much time I've spent thinking about math and how many years I've spent obsessed with functional programming, even I think that category theory, the math behind functional programming, is pretty esoteric. So I get the fear. The concepts and jargon are often poorly explained and unfortunately littered around the internet when all you want is some help that you can easily understand. Monads are monoids in the category of endofunctors, of course. What more do you want? Even accessible introductions to category theory and functional programming are often a mathematician's view of what would be accessible to a programmer. So a math nerd I may be, but primarily a programmer am I. I learned all this stuff initially through coding and then filled in all the math later. So I will not be mathematically rigorous and will be stumbling into the concepts, reinventing them through little coding exercises. And that is the gift I give to you, my fellow engineers. All that said, I can't dunk on the mathematicians too hard. The studies of category theory and lambda calculus have rich histories of research and thought. So while us engineers are frolicking around in code land, the mathematicians have been doing the hard work to make sure we're standing on solid ground. You had a problem in your life and who stepped up to help you? Math. Those jargony concepts identify relationships that crop up all the time, and from that flows all sorts of standard ways to manipulate them. It doesn't matter if we're talking about strings, numbers, custom objects, form fields, database clusters, asynchronous concurrent logic, these patterns transcend those differences. Just like how all of these are actually broccoli. We'll be using TypeScript for all of our code because it's one of the most popular languages out there. Regardless of how you feel, if you're building for the web, you're probably using JavaScript or stuck with JavaScript. And if you're using JavaScript, you might as well just use TypeScript. But even if you're unfamiliar, you should be able to pick up the syntax along the way and follow along with the overall concepts. I'll try to call out anything specific if it comes up. And remember, these concepts are universal and timeless. They've existed long before TypeScript, and they'll exist long after TypeScript's gone. Even when we're all using the new hotness SwiftyScript, these concepts still remain universal truths about computation. So let's get past the jargon, let's stop reinventing the monad, and let's get into functional programming. <laughs>